seeing the players interact with the kids specifically, like whether it's the spring training visit oh, or the weekend. Night last was night was a great moment. I mean, it, you know, you see these guys, they're baseball players, and, you know, that's how we see them too. But then there's a, clearly another side, and that, that's got to be pretty special. Well, there is another side, and you don't see that side a lot because they're out on the field, they're serious, they're working, they're doing what they need to do. Uh, Maybe we hit a home run, people smile, they jump up and down, but all in all, you don't see that side. But we have a tremendous group of staff and players, and so we're in a position that they will do anything they can to help out in the community, but especially when you start talking about children. It touches their hearts. It's touched all their hearts. Many of them are parents themselves, fathers, and and if not, they have friends that are, and you can see that they'll do anything they can to help out in that type in this type of cause. So. Um, it's great that other people have that opportunity to see them in that in that type of atmosphere. Um, it's sincere, it's legitimate, and anything they can do, they will. Last night before the game, uh, kids from the Jimmy Fund accompanied your players out to their positions on the field, and the little girl during, doing cartwheels out with Andrew Benintendi in left field, and, and watching the players with each of these kids to your point, the sincerity. They wanted to talk with these kids and be with these kids last night. Well, they do. They do. And and it's it's interesting. Here you are, you're independent, right? right. I mean, you're, you're big games, big series. But that almost takes a side, steps aside to be in a position when you start dealing with the children and the cause. And that really becomes part that they're enamored with. They're happy to be, participate, do anything they can. And, of course, children, they, they lighten up. You, you also, as an individual, they bring that smile to your face, and you can see the way they interact with the players. It's just, uh, it's real, and, and so it's, it's fun to be part of and to see that part of the action. Now, you've been in other markets, so I don't know if it's the same there that it is here, but for an event like this where the Red Sox are so synonymous with it, yet you see the Bruins and the Patriots and the Celtics all coming together for such a great cause, is that unique to Boston, or is that you find that in other places? Well, I don't know for sure, because even though having a long career, I haven't been everywhere. No, no, <laughs> but, of course. But no, no, but when <laughs> I say... Yet. <laughs> Not yet, but I hope that doesn't happen. But no, but traveling throughout the time um, periods and then being part of conversations that take place, I think it's unique to Boston. I don't ever see this interaction to this type of totality between the different organizations with a specific cause with the Jimmy Fund and, and being involved. So when you see all the participants from all the different sports, uh, I don't see it anywhere else in, in anywhere where I travel throughout Major League Baseball. Let's talk about your baseball team for a minute. Uh, you hired Alex Cora with some expectations of what he was going to bring to the table. Has he surprised even you as to the job that he's done with this team so far this year? Well, we anticipated him to do a good job or we wouldn't have hired sure. him. And But I would also say you never expect a guy to lead any club to be in 50 games above 500. So he has, um, I think, probably... The biggest surprise would be the, the quick learning aspect of it. You know, he was a good baseball man, very intelligent, good communicator, felt he keep the, keep the clubhouse loose, knows the game, leadership capabilities in every respect. But he's also taken in very quickly what's expected of the job. And even though he'd been a manager in winter ball, much different than managing with the Boston Red Sox organization, been the bench coach in Houston, significantly different. He's just adjusted so well to it feels comfortable in the role, and I think makes the players feel comfortable. So I think the way he's adjusted to it and so quickly, um, maybe he's even caught me by surprise. Now your ace is on the DL for the second time this month. I'm terrified by that. <laughs> I, I am freaking out. But what, what's sort of his status, and you know, where, what's the update on him? Well, you never like to see a, anybody on the DL, and your ace in particular. But I also think you try to keep it in levels of um, concern. And this one is... As far as disablements, is not a major concern. It's easily identified from a doctor perspective. Chris knows what it is. We've been able to take care of it once already. I think maybe, and, and nobody really knows, but when Chris went out there, we gave him a little bit extra time. He was pain-free at that, at that time. Maybe we need to give it a list a little bit more time. It's not as bad as it was the last time. I think we will get him plenty ready for late September. And if we were not in this situation we are right now with, with a good lead, I think he'd probably be going out there and pitching. But we're also in a position where we don't want to do that to him. We'd much rather have him throw like he did in Baltimore that particular day coming back than we would him fighting through this on a continued basis. David Price was in here yesterday with Brock Holt. 
and, and I got to say, uh, I saw a side of David Price that I haven't seen much of in this town. Uh, I was happy to see it, by the way, it, and, and, and I enjoyed it. Do you think he's misunderstood by, by baseball fans in this town? I think he is. Uh and I'm partial. I mean, I've known David since 2015. We traded for him um, when I was in, uh, even before that, I should say, 2014. I've known him for that full season. We acquired him in 13, traded him in 15. So I've known him for quite a long time. Not only is he, forget about the pitching aspect of it. That speaks for itself because he's very talented. But he's a fine individual. He has a great heart. He's a good family man. He's a fantastic teammate. Very involved in a community. But I think that there's so much focus on what takes place on the field that a lot of times you don't get a chance to see the other side of him and a lot of other players. And I think what's happened is you know, he's a little was a little more active and the social media uh, maybe got stung a little bit in that regard. So sometimes you step back and you give a little bit more of just the, the face. The, the, you don't give all to everybody. You don't show yourself. But this is a wonderful human being. He's got a great heart. And it's, it's unfortunate, but he understands it. I mean, he understands it that, hey, when, when it really comes down to it, you could have the best heart, be the best person, but he's paid to win baseball games. And if he doesn't participate and do well at a particular time, he's going to get criticized. And that's part of the, the territory. And sometimes it's not easy to accept, but that unfortunately is the way it is. But I will tell you, he's a wonderful human being. Do you think he's changed at all, his, his personality from year one here to year three? I mean, maybe not his personality, but just how he interacts with, with media members, with, with fans on social media and things like that. Do you think there's been a change there? Well, I don't do social media myself, so I don't follow that. Um, I, I was told wisely, I think, years ago to not do that. Probably smart, yeah. yeah. I say so. and, I, and I think <laughs> from what I my understanding is he's backed off of that yeah. as much as he used to. So yeah. that, uh, I think, was wise on his part i do think he's changed in one sense is that i think he's much more guarded he's not any different in the clubhouse his, his teammates love him he's fantastic in there but i think he's much more guarded and i think after you go through an episode some of it can be your own fault some of it uh, you share in the blame but it's a situation you just become much more guarded and i think he's become more like that it's august 22nd You've got to vote for American League MVP. Who do you vote for? I split my vote between <laughs> Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez, so that's what I do. I end up splitting my vote there it, right It's there. such a great dilemma, isn't it, when you've well, got two guys who are legitimate candidates? Well, it is. It's great. And there's other candidates. We're seeing them across the field sure. right now. You see guys Lindor and Ramirez are mm. tremendous candidates, and all of a sudden Chris Davis and Oakland starting to put up some big numbers too. But uh, it is. It's fun to come to the ballpark and know that you're going to be able to watch those players play. And I think not only, I mean, fans enjoy it. They enjoy the all-around abilities, the way they hit, the way they play the game, the energy level that they bring. But it also is just fun to watch from a baseball perspective because to watch that type of talent, it doesn't happen very often. Now, you have a couple of guys, uh, and Chris Sale, who's under contract for next year. J.D. Martinez, we know there's all these opt-outs in there, so, but he's definitely under contract for next year. Could this offseason be a time to uh, approach those guys and try to lock them up? Or is it, hey, we have them under contract, we've got them for pretty good deals, and we'll address it later on? Well, I, I, it's one I've, I've always learned to not speak contractually publicly because it usually is one of those things that um, people then come back to you, and you really can't win in that regard. But I will say that you can feel comfortable, though those are the type of players who want to be Boston Red Sox for a long time. And they're very good players. There's quality individuals in the clubhouse. Um, some of the top performers in Major League Baseball. And so they're the type of guys that not only ourselves, our fans, but ownership want to keep for a long time. You've been around the game for a long time. Uh, Chris Sale said this is the best baseball team that's ever walked the planet. <laughs> did he say that? They've walked the yeah, planet. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's that's, right. Where do you come down on how your team looks right now? Well, we have a good club. There's no doubt about that. It's a lot of fun. I mean, we have a chance to win over. I think we should win over 100 games. Uh, we have a chance to set a record for the number of wins for the Boston Red Sox organization. It's been in existence for a long time. So it's a lot of fun to watch us play. Um, you tackle the regular season because you know that's what's the most important. And you can't even be talking about the postseason. I'm very careful myself. I know Alex and the staff members, you don't start talking about the postseason and planning purposes until you take care of business, which is trying to win your division, which we're trying to do. I think ultimately that answer ends up taking place in the long run. It's who ends up winning world championships, right? That's how you're remembered. But I don't want to get to that point yet. I'd like to enjoy the ride, let the guys go out there, try to win a ball game tonight against a tough club. And, and eventually, and I'm glad Chris feels that way. 
and believe me, he makes us one of the better clubs because it's tough to be a much better pitcher than he is right now. But we're also in a situation there's been a lot of good clubs throughout time periods, and um, let's see what happens. But also, I mean, enjoying the now, and we had David Price and Brock Holt on yesterday. They said the same thing about you know the day-to-day part of it. But the more wins you guys continue to pile up, you know, maybe a franchise record likely, don't the expectations then raise and there may be more pressure come playoff time that, hey, you know, one and done or even two and done may not do it because this team is that good? Well, the, it's interesting, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to borrow a quote from a guy that uh, I respect a great deal, a manager by the name of Jim Leland. <clears throat> and Jim Leland, because we had some good clubs, and he'd say, there's good pressure and there's bad pressure. And that's good pressure. Because if you have a good club that can go out there and play, that's the type of pressure you want to have. So if you're going to win or expected to win, there comes some expectations with that. But that's good pressure if you have a good club and we have the capabilities to perform. Meteorologist Dave Dombrowski already told me the game's going <laughs> to be played tonight. We're going to play tonight. Game Come on, on out to the yeah. ballpark for sure. Come on out of here for sure. Dave, thank you very much for coming by and lending your support to this event. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Great for having me. And thanks for thanks. all that you're doing as well as all the fans. And all everything they can do, please keep doing it. Thank you.